Hey everybody, Dr. Neville here. So today we're going to talk about um, a new tip for sleep. And if you were with me yesterday or you, you know, already caught the video, um, you saw that one was about caffeine, which most of us know, um, but we got a little more on the nitty gritty side of things. And today may seem like it's a little redundant to yesterday, but it's not. And I'll tell you why. So the topic is dark chocolate. Now, you may think that this is similar to caffeine because we know that caffeine is in dark chocolate. True, it is. But dark chocolate has some other things going on with it, which makes it get its own shout out. So caffeine is a methylxanthine. And there are two other methylxanthines in dark chocolate. And those are called theobromine and theophylline. And all three of these, counting caffeine, um, are, uh, the methylxanthines are stimulants. And the two new ones that I'm bringing on today, the theobromine and theophylline, are like, probably not even quite cousins, they're probably more like siblings to caffeine because they're all in this theo, or methylxanthine family. So you may have, depending on your background, have heard of theophylline before. And that's because it's in medications. And in fact, that's what made it catch notice that it could potentially be um, impairing sleep because it's in medications for respiratory medications like for COPD or and asthmatics. And it was because those people were having difficulty sleeping that there was an investigation to decide or to figure out if there are medication, if there's impeding effects from theophylline for sleep. And the answer is yes, there are impeding effects. In fact, it affects your deep sleep, how much you get of deep sleep. It affects your sleep efficiency, which is essentially a ratio of sleep to time in bed. We can talk more about that on another day. And it um, delays how fast you can fall asleep. But one of the biggest things about theophylline is that it increases the number of awakenings that you have at night. That's one of its impairing, uh, bi biggest troubling effects of it. And then the other sibling, theobromine, it also has the same problem of effect, affecting your deep sleep, affecting your sleep efficiency, number of awakenings, all of those things. So it is affecting your sleep as well. And it is very similar to caffeine and the fact that it is also a wolf in sheep's clothing and it mimics the effects of adenosine. Like we talked about how we, we accumulate adenosine over the day which increases our sleepiness as adenosine rises and then we reduce our adenosine levels overnight while we sleep and that improves our sleepiness. So that hopefully we wake up alert. That's the, that's the plan anyway. Well, like caffeine being, you know, attaching to the receptors, theobromine does the same thing. It attaches to the receptors and it blocks the sleepiness effect that adenosine usually gives us. So, which means that we have a hard time falling asleep. And um, the difference between caffeine and theobromine is that um, theobromine has a half-life double, essentially, of caffeine. And so it actually lasts for 10 hours, half-life. So 10 hours after your dark chocolate, you only have, you still have half of the theobromine that you ate in that dark chocolate. And so obviously the effects are much longer. Now, the good news and the reason why we don't hear about this one nearly as much as we hear about caffeine is because it is also significantly weaker than caffeine. So maybe even as much as 10 times weaker. So that's good news. Um, and that will mean that you're going to get a less intense feeling from drinking or eating dark chocolate compared to the, you know, a stimulant, intense stimulant feeling that you can get from caffeine. Um, and it will, because of the half-life, it should hopefully um, not give you that jittery feeling that you can get on the central nervous system from caffeine. Um, 
and it also is not addictive. Caffeine is um, addictive. It, it notoriously has a reputation for that, for caffeine addicts. Um, but you don't really get that with uh, theobromine. So those are some advantages um, that dark chocolate has with these cousins compared to caffeine. Um, however, you know, with three methylxanthines that are all stimulants in dark chocolate, it is certainly worth mentioning. And if you are a dark chocolate lover or you're somebody who likes to have a piece of dark chocolate, maybe a significant size, before bed and you're having trouble sleeping, perhaps it's the methylxanthines that are your problem. So, um, I will say that the darker your chocolate, the more cocoa and therefore the more methylxanthines that you have in your dark chocolate. So generally it's advocated to have dark chocolate over milk chocolate for health reasons, you know, the generally weight gain and all of the other health effects. But in terms of sleep, um, the darker chocolates are your enemy with sleep. Now, this may or may not be the reason why you're having difficulty sleeping, but if you are having difficulty sleeping and you do regularly eat dark chocolate or dark chocolate close to, because remember how long that half-life is, it's long. So, um, you know, what I would recommend is avoiding dark chocolate for a few weeks and test it out and see, does it have an impact on your sleep? And if it doesn't, then it's probably not your problem and you could slowly integrate it back into your life again. Um, but if you're having trouble sleeping and you're a dark chocolate lover, it is certainly worth exploring and doing the trial and seeing if that can improve your sleep. Okay, that's the tip for today. And I will see you tomorrow for the next one. Have a good one.